Step four, detecting errors purification. So in this step, we will address uh, what happens when uh, we, we also include errors into our considerations and how we can handle them and uh, create a, a state between station zero and station two that's of acceptable quality. So our desired state that we want to share between states, uh, station zero and two is given by maximally entangled state phi plus. In the density form, we can just write it as the outer product in this uh, uh, form. But in reality, there will always be some uh, noise that are spoiling our operations. So we will not end up with the pure state uh, phi plus. In fact, what we will have is with some probability given by the fidelity f, we will have the state uh, phi plus, and that will be mixed with some noise terms with uh, probability given by one minus f. So the question now is, how can we detect it and how can we correct it? So here we will represent the uh, noisy bell state by slightly uh, misaligned uh, arrows like that. So rather than considering uh, the full general case of how noise affects our uh, maximally entangled state, we will consider uh, just one example, and that's the flip channel. Now this channel we have seen in lesson three, step three, and it goes as follows. We, are, we have our input uh, pure state psi, and let's say that it travels through a noisy, noisy channel represented by this noisy fiber. And at the end of the output, we can get two outcomes, and only two outcomes. One is the intended uh, pure state psi, and we get it with probability one minus p. And the other one is a different state where we apply the flip operation represented by the Pauli X matrix. So with probability p, we get a state that's flipped. So X times state psi. And mathematically, we represent this output as a density matrix in the following form. So with probability one minus p, we have our uh, uh, intended desired state psi, and with probability p, we have the state psi, but flipped where we applied the density, uh, the matrix uh, Pauli X. So for example, if our input state is a zero, then the output state will have the following form. If we just substitute uh, zero for psi, we get the following expression, which in matrix form can be written as this. It only has two diagonal terms. With probability one minus p, it's in a zero, and with probability p, it's in a one. On the other hand, if our uh, input state is uh, one, then our output state is given by this expression, where with probability one minus p, we get one, and with probability p, we flip it back to zero. So again, it's a diagonal uh, matrix, but this time it, uh, the probabilities are uh, flipped. So how is uh, our bell state affected by this uh, flip channel? Well, we said that at the end, uh, our, our output state is given by this form. With uh, some probability given by the fidelity f, we've got our desired maximally mixed state phi plus, and with some probability one minus f, we've got some noise terms. But now we are considering the particular example of a bit uh, of a flip channel. So our noise term is only given by x applied to the state uh, uh, phi plus. Now, but remember the state phi plus actually has two qubits. So where are we applying the flip? Uh, where are we applying the um, Pauli x operator? Actually, it doesn't matter where we apply it, as long as it's just one qubit. So we may apply it on qubit one, or we may apply it on qubit two. In both cases, we will still end up with the following state. With some probability uh, given by the fidelity f, we've got our intended state phi plus, and with probability one minus f, we've got some noisy term represented by a state psi plus, because if we apply x to one of the qubits of a phi plus, we obtain state um, uh, psi plus. Now, keep in mind that this is just one possible uh, source of error out of many, many possibilities. You could have many other unitary errors, or you could also have non-unitary errors. But here, we just want to keep it simple. If you are interested in all of the sources of other errors, we recommend you look at some uh, literature on quantum error correction. So, we said that we would like to detect the errors 
and correct the errors. One way of doing that is using quantum error, error correction. But usually this comes with a large overhead in terms of qubits and also in terms of operations. In here, we will look at a more simple and less ambitious, ambitious procedure known as purification. And uh, in this process, we will see that we can easily detect whether error has occurred or not. And after the procedure, we will end up with some probability in the intended state uh, phi plus, even if some errors have occurred uh, during the process. The point is that we would like to know the information, like has our uh, ideal state be, been uh, affected by noise or not? One way is to measure the state, but of course this destroys the entanglement in the state. So we have to be very, gen very careful how we handle and how we obtain the information about what our uh, state is in. So we need to do this procedure of purification without destroying our state. If we destroy it, then we cannot establish entanglement between end-to-end -end nodes. And another complication is that these qubits are not, hold, uh, not held uh, locally by one player, let's say Alice or Bob. They are held uh, in two different network nodes, so they are far apart, maybe tens of kilometers apart. So we have to keep that in mind. So the solution is to use another bell pair and use this other bell pair to learn some information about the bell pair that we are trying to purify. So we have the following scenario. We still have station zero and station two, but this time uh, we have two copies of a noisy bell pair that the stations share between each other. Previously, we have seen, uh, we have seen how we can establish uh, this end-to-end -end entanglement. So let's say that we've done it twice and we know that we are sharing two copies of a noisy bell state. Then Alice and Bob, they can apply some local operations on their qubits. And soon we will see what those operations are. By doing these two qubit operations and then performing some measurements, they can actually find out information about one of their um, entangled pairs without destroying the entanglement between them and correct it so that the uh, end result, the end state that's shared between station 0 and 2 is of higher quality in terms of the fidelity. So let's see how that works. Here these wires, these two horizontal wires, represent uh, bell pairs shared between Alice and Bob. So we've got state 5 plus 1 and state 5 plus 2. Or at least these are the ideal state that we would like to share. Of course in real life they will be noisy. And then time flows on, for Alice, it flows from right to left, meaning first she applies a C0 gate on her qubits, where the first qubit that she uh, has is the control and the second qubit is the target. On Bob's side, the time flows from left to right. So again, meaning first he applies a C0 on his qubits where the first one is control and the second one is target again. And then both of them, both Alice and Bob, they measure their second qubit in the Z basis. They obtain their measurements, which is either zero or one, and then they exchange information. They exchange this classical information with each other. And this is how we can represent it mathematically. So we start with a state uh, psi plus and psi plus uh, so in tensor product. This uh, psi plus is shared, is the first pair shared between Alice and Bob, and this is the second pair shared between Alice and Bob. We can expand it out, and for uh, clarity we are um, omitting the normalization factor. So we obtain the initial state in the following form. We've got a superposition of four terms. Then we apply the control not gate on Alice's qubits. So we are applying the control not gate between the first qubit and the third qubit. They represent the qubits that uh, are on Alice's side. So here, uh, for this term, we've got Alice's qubits in the state 0, 0, so the C0 doesn't change them. For the second term, they are 0, 1, so again, nothing changes. Whereas uh, for the next case, Alice's qubit is in 1 uh, and 0, therefore the C0 gate transforms it into 1, 1. And similarly for the last term. And then we apply the C0 on Bob's side and we obtain the following expression. We see that nothing has really changed. And in fact, 
uh, we again obtain two bell pairs with, shared between Alice and Bob. And now after the measurement of the second bell pair, we know that since they are in the state phi plus, the, the measurements have to be correlated. So with equal probability, they can apply, obtain 0, 0 or 1, 1, but they cannot obtain anti-correlated uh, um, results. So by exchanging the classical information between Alice and Bob, they can check if their results are correlated or not. If they are correlated, they keep uh, the, uh, the first, uh, first uh, pair of qubits. If they are not correlated, they just discard them. So let's say that no error has occurred on our bell pairs. So uh, our pair one is in the ideal state phi plus, and our pair two is also in the ideal state phi plus. This happens with probability f squared. When they go through the purification procedure, the measurement results can only be 0, 0 or 1, 1. They are correlated, therefore they agree, therefore Alice and Bob keep their first bell pair. Remember, the second bell pair is destroyed by the measurement. And this, uh, uh, at the end, they end up with a state phi plus. This is not so surprising because they already started with the ideal case phi plus, so therefore purification should work. But let's consider the case where a bit flip channel has occurred on both uh, pairs. So we're considering this uh, last row in the column. Alice and Bob are sharing two pairs of the state psi plus. So it's not their uh, ideal uh, intended state. This can occur with probability one minus F squared. But again, if we go through the whole procedure of applying the C naught gates and then measuring the second uh, pair of qubits in the Z basis, we can again check that we obtain correlated results 0, 0 and 1, 1. These, uh, again, they, they agree, therefore we keep the first, uh, first uh, pair of qubits. So the success probably, probability of this procedure is given by this following expression. It's f squared plus 1 minus f squared. Therefore, the output fidelity is given by uh, f prime equals to the ratio of f squared with the success probability. Now, you can notice that if the initial fidelity is larger than 0 0.1, so it's larger than a half, then the uh, new obtained fidelity actually increases. This is why uh, this procedure is called purification. We start with some initial amount of the fidelity and we want to get it as high as possible. So what we do is we take two noisy states and we apply the purification and with some success probability, we obtain only one state, but of higher fidelity. Of course, you can have more and more uh, pairs of states and keep applying this probability and keep increasing, uh, sorry, keep uh, applying purification and this way you increase uh, the uh, fidelity of the end pairs even further.